Hey folks, sorry I haven't done a video this weekend. I feel terrible about it. I've been recording the swing trading blueprint videos for hours and hours and hours and had multiple systems crashes along the way, but that's okay. So I'm gonna do a quick video now, but I'll do one tomorrow morning. Just to update you quickly on what's going on. Let's start with currencies and swing through here. Let's take a couple of minutes. So the Euro, uh, triple peak on there, is it going bearish? I don't know, all depends on the dollar index. These are the things we're watching right now. Dollar index still trying to base there, but not looking good. There's the 20 period moving average, not managing to really get up. Those are the paths that I have in mind. But I think we need to retrace back up to this um, channel line breakout. We've only had one move down, no retracements. Dollar's a bit oversold, consolidating down here. Maybe the dollar's got some legs in it back up to that trend line. About a 5%, maybe 4% rally. That would mean euro down and the pound down. We're already short on the pound, but not on the euro. So the pound's looking quite toppish. And this is the only currency trade we're particularly interested in right now. Looking pretty good. We tried there, it failed. We still got that position and that position there. So not too bad. We'll see how that goes. I do think the dollar is likely to get a little bit of a wiggle on. And as a result, it should drag the dollar yen up. But this is the one that's unwinding the carry trade still. And there's still a lot of downward momentum. So looking at this on the day chart, that's the four hour. You can see we've just retraced to the 50 period moving average, bounced back down a big bearish candle. We've taken shorts there and there. We didn't take one there and we didn't take one there. So what's happening next on this, I don't know. If the dollar does get a sort of a bounce, we could see the dollar yen bouncing back up to its trend line too. There's a lot of moving averages, horizontal support and that big channel line breakout, massive channel, multi-year channel. It's only been retested once on a bounce. Could we retest one more time? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. All depends on the dollar and whether the dollar can drag the yen down again as the dollar sort of picks up a bit of pace. Right. NASDAQ and S&P looking toppish. We're short from those positions. Not much on the names, actually. We've got out of our Apple and Microsoft longs at the top of the rally. We're short on NVIDIA. A little bit underwater there, as you can see. Uh, also IDWM, but that's hedged. And Tesla, we have a little short on that. That might have to be hedged. And XLF, a little short there. But not much on those. These are the main things we're looking at. NASDAQ, S&P shorts. Going across to gold. Are we topping out here on gold? I don't know. This is the day chart down below. Massive rally, long, long, long rally on gold. Look at that. I think it needs to come back a bit. We're short on gold, but we're long on Bitcoin. This is the weekend trading over Bitcoin, just this little sort of conglomeration here. And if you look at the day chart on Bitcoin, well, it looks quite constructive still. Looking a little bit weak. I think if you looked at the stochastic and the RSI, you'd find out that we've got a little bit of divergence there. I guarantee it. Put some comments in the video if you've spotted that yourself already. I haven't got those oscillators on the chart, but I can see by the way the chart looks, we're running out of steam. Despite rising higher, the oscillators are probably making lower highs. Right, Nat Gas, the big one, well, just keeps on going up. We're still long. We've barely uh, changed this position for a number of days now, even weeks. And we haven't really got out of any long positions, so we're still holding this. It'll be interesting to see what happens on the weekend. This is the Henry Hub chart over here. This is just a very quick update. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. We've broken through that resistance and that peak there, and we're well up into, well, close to $3 now. I think we could get above $3 or at least test it, and maybe we'll rush up to $3, maybe just above there uh, with a weekend gap, and then get that retracement that everyone's looking for. Or you may be locked out, and this might just carry on going up without giving you an opportunity to maybe you've got some short hedges on that you want to get rid of. I know some people who do. Or maybe you'd like to buy on dips and you haven't got enough on or you didn't get any on. Or maybe you're looking to sell. So watch for reversal candles and a bit of a pullback and maybe we'll get some more opportunities. Uh, on the South African Rand, I talked about this in the live uh, session I've just held, I've just finished. Looking at these candles, 13 candles downwards. We're going to have a bounce. We've exited our shorts. We've got to get back up to this flat bottom breakdown and then resell at some point. If we get back up there, there's the 20 period moving average, flat bottom breakdown, beautiful. We sold uh, miles ago there back in February. We've been selling since then and then since the elections in South Africa, which were fairly positive overall. So could we get a bounce back up to the flat bottom or all the way back up to the channel line breakout? We had a little retest from underneath there, but not much. So we could get all the way back up to, let's say, 18, which is the big psychological number, 18 rands to the US dollar. On VIX, we've got a long position. That's just edging up. Actually, we've got a quite a nice position on this. We got in quite low, just around about 18, six, sorry, 16.2, I think it was. 
We're now at 18.2. So that's quite a big profit. Doesn't look much. We're not going to get up there right now, I don't think. But I think we'll see some reverberations of that one singular spike. It never normally happens by itself like that. So watch for some spikes up. TLT we're long on and we're also short on pound czar. And then going across to commodities, we took a short on cocoa late on Friday. Well, quite late, halfway through the day. Uh, in some decent profit, we actually got a very strong move down. The reason I think this is a good move, technically, and I know that there's still pressure on cocoa prices. I'm very well aware of that. I also know there's pressure on oil prices. I also know there's pressure on wheat prices yet. Those prices have come down. So don't worry about the fundamentals too much. Look at what's happening on the chart, combined with the fundamentals, of course. We want to know what's going on outside in the growing and market area places. But that big spike high is quite telling right up to the top of that trend line. Big consolidation pattern. I've had this line drawn in for months and months and months. Will we follow it? I don't know. We'll see. But we're in some profit on that. We've got a hedge position on coffee, corn, cotton. Uh, orange juice we're short. Wheat we're long. Soybeans we're long in big profit. Sugar we're long in big profit. So all of the commodities, the softs and grains looking good. Bitcoin looking good edging up a little bit as we're talking actually this is the four hour chart natural gas fantastic brent crude oil for those of you wondering i'm still short on this looking for opportunities to that's the wrong chart to sell as jinx walks past my feet hello jinx jinx the cat let's get down into this chart because the cat is distracting me now um this is still the pattern i think we're going to hold to in general and you can see where that's heading quite low much lower than where we are right now but we might need a little bit of bounce. Obviously, there's geopolitical pressure on this and, you know, oil's a funny thing. So is gas. So who knows? But if we do get back up to that level there, I'll add some more to the shorts. We've got a short position from there and a couple from up here. So looking pretty good overall. We're moving down. Uh, we'll see a lot of spikes along the way, particularly as this war in the Middle East and um, the war in Ukraine continues. These are going to go up and down in a very spiky non-linear sort of fashion as you can see is already happening natural gas i'm very bullish on very happy with that bitcoin we talked about and if we can get these stock markets to pull down that would be great we need the dollar to rally um, the dollar index to pick up a little bit and find some support where it is it's looking a bit weak i'm afraid for those dollar bulls like i am roughly a dollar bull not totally committed to it we could get up there but if we don't we're going to slip slide away and follow the red path at least down to 95 no, sorry, 99 and a half. We're at 100 now, actually 100 and a half. So that's a 1% drop. If you're trading the euro and the pound, expect if this carries on going down to this 95, maybe make a double bottom there. That would mean that the euro and the pound will have to continue to increase by about 100 pips or so, roughly in that region. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Like, subscribe, share, all those sorts of things. And all the links below, I've put a whole set of fresh links below the page if you're interested in any of the things that we have to offer. Take care.